Hey guys, Kevin Ismer for The Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 2, JSS, and I was definitely looking forward to this episode. I think the premiere last week was really great. I know a lot of people weren't a fan of it because maybe it was too long or they didn't really like all the exposition that was in the episode. Whatever it is about the premiere, I thought it was a great premiere. I know a lot of people didn't, but I thought it was great. Uh, and I was definitely looking forward to this episode, especially the cliffhanger last week. It was very interesting to see where this episode was going to go. I have to say that I thought this episode was definitely not as good as last week's premiere, but I still thought this was another great episode. And sure, maybe we didn't get to see all the characters and things that we wanted to see in this episode in in it, um, but I did think this was a pretty great episode overall, and I kind of like it when The Walking Dead takes some time to focus more on the secondary characters than it does on the central characters. There's no Rick or Daryl in this episode, or, Glenn, or you know Glenn or any of them. They're not in this episode. And uh, I know some people might be upset about that, but that's just how this episode went. And honestly, I was completely fine with that. Uh, I still thought this was an amazing episode, nevertheless. And especially because there's so many characters on this show, they kind of had to do an episode like this. And let's just get into it. There's a lot to get into. The beginning of this episode, I thought, was just fantastic. I love it when The Walking Dead does flashbacks and makes us care about this character more. One of the characters that I feel has been a little bit underdeveloped is Enid. Um... You know, Carl's potential love interest, possibly girlfriend. I really feel they are going to get together this season. I, I just definitely see something happening between them. Uh, we haven't seen too much of her character. We know that Carl's been with her, and we really know how to feel about her. And we start to see sort of her story um, before the apocalypse. She's hanging out of a truck, calls for her parents as, uh, as as walkers close in, and they all they everyone dies in the truck except for her. And we cut to Ina in a bloody car, zombies feed beside her, and she's now out wandering on her own and hiding in the woods. And it's it's really devastating, I have to say. And uh, she writes JSS in the dirt, and we don't really know what that means. And Ined then finds a car with a dead body fallen from the driver's seat, which awakens when she tries to move it, so she puts it down and finds Sanctuary in the car, writing JSS on the window. Later, she finds a turtle in the woods and eats it. She writes JSS on the ground with its bones. And again, we don't know what JSS is, but outside of Alexandria, Ined evaluates the walls and areas. She hears the voices and laughs coming from inside as she's reluctant to approach the gate. You know, she doesn't know what's going to happen um, in Alexandria, and she writes JSS on her head, as she enters the safe zone, and uh, basically that's how she got to Alexandria, and I like seeing that. And it didn't seem like that important of a scene, but it really set the tone uh, for this episode, because JSS is something that's actually very important, and we get into that in this episode. The main uh, character that we focus on this episode, I'd say, is Carol. This was really Carol's episode, and we've had episodes that focus on Carol, but we really haven't had an episode that was simply Carol-centric, I'd say, since The Grove. That was the last time we had a really powerful Carol episode, and I don't think this episode was as powerful as that one, but it still was quite powerful, and I really liked where they went, uh with this episode, definitely with Carol, because Carol plans some dinner with the women of Alexandria, and as we know, Carol really has changed um, in Alexandria. She's a lot more of, you know, not as, she's still just as powerful, but she's talking about the food she used to make Ed, and we really see that she's trying to get back to that kind of like stay-at-home mom sort of thing, and I thought that was definitely interesting that we saw that, and, uh, Basically, the women call her a hero and her miraculous recipes, and Shelly wants a pasta maker, and Carol promises to show her how to cook spaghetti if she'll quit smoking, and Carol approaches Sam, who is on her steps, and tells him to live with what happened to his father, and everything just seems great with Carol, you know, she really seems like she's being the stay-at-home mom very well. Um, and then we get the scene between Jesse and Ron that I really love, because she calls, Jesse calls for Ron, who comes to the kitchen, refuses a haircut, he shuts her down and tells her it's just, you know, that this is bullshit what she's doing, that he, she's just trying to get him to talk to her, you know, get, uh, get him to try, get her trying to talk to him, and she asks Ron if he blames her for what happened, and she tells Ron to raise his left hand above his head because he can't, but he can't because of what Pete did to him, because, you know, Pete was abusive to the entire family, and Ron insists that Rick is dangerous, but Jesse says that Rick is her friend and that they need to trust him. And uh, I do agree with Jesse. I like that Jesse is starting to realize, look, I know that some people don't agree with Rick, but I need to because Rick is going to help me survive. And Rick is the only way I'm going to survive, and I really like seeing that. So I like that Jesse is starting to understand that. Like I said last week, she's understanding, and here she is too. 
So Deanne and Maggie start farming. Maggie, of course, was told to stay back, and there's a rumor going around that Maggie might be pregnant, and that's why Glenn might have told her to stay back. We don't get into that in this episode, but I think it is a plausible theory because that is something that is in the comic books, and while this show does tend to deviate from the comic books, it has stayed pretty close to it in terms of major plot points, so... I'm assuming that that would have that is going to happen, and I'm assuming that could be a possibility. But I'm not going to confirm that. Oh, Maggie is definitely pregnant, but I do think that that theory is pretty plausible and could definitely be true. Um, more on that, I guess, in a future episode. We'll see, though. So <clears throat> Maggie hands Deanna a bag of seeds and tells her crates full of them were found for all sorts of vegetables. And she tells Deanna they need to continue to grow the community for Reg and that everyone who is in the safe zone is there because of her. And Deanna accepts a shovel from Maggie and Eugene and Tara are then debating on building a church because, you know, they want to pursue that faith. And Eugene's not exactly for the idea. He doesn't know if it's a good idea because he doesn't know how they're really going to... Uh, react to them doing that, and Dr. Denise Cloyd then joins the conversation, you know, Dr. Denise is a new character, played by Merritt Weaver, who, it was cool to see her in here, she did feel a bit kind of just like, oh, we got a new character here, but I thought she was really good overall, I definitely liked, um, her character, um, she tells them she's a new doctor, and reveals she's actually a psychologist, and she's nervous to act as a doctor, but ask, still asks Tara why she needs aspirin, and begins, and begins to, uh, evaluate her, and Carl pushes Judith around the streets of Alexandria. He sees Enid and Ron sitting together as Father Gabriel approaches him. Gabriel confesses what he told to Deanna, and you can tell that Gabriel is just doing, again, whatever he can to try to get the trust back of these people. He knows they don't really want anything to do with him, but he's trying to, and he confesses what he told Deanna and says he was speaking about himself and not the group, and he knows that now, and Carl tells him that he'll need to tell everybody. He's ready to learn how to fight, and Carl's willing to teach him, starting with the machete, um... I'm going to say right now that I don't know if Gabriel's going to be willing to fight. You know, even though he's ready, he wants to learn how to fight, I don't know if Gabriel's really going to go along with it because this is Gabriel we're talking about. He's not uh, the most powerful, you know, he's not as powerful as they might want him to be, and that really sucks, but that's kind of the situation that they're in, which uh, really sucks that that's going on there. Um, but basically, we then see that uh, uh, Carl's willing to teach him starting the machete, and Carl starts a timer with a monitor on the baby. She looks out the window, sees Shelly attacked with, by a man with a machete, and basically, that already is pretty crazy. Shelly has now been attacked, and this is really when things start. This is when the episode gets insane, and uh, from here on out, the episode is pretty crazy. Deanna and Maggie see flames, take the Alexandria walls, and look out. Men hop the fence. Car Carl and Carol prepare with guns. Carl will stay back to protect Judith, and... Jesse wants to go find Ron. Sam doesn't want her to go. She tells him to hide. They hide together in the closet after hearing people nearby. And Alexandra's are just getting slaughtered in the street. It is just insane. And what I loved about this is that this is all going on while Rick and all of them, you know, are, are defending those walk, are trying to get away from those walkers. That's what's going on here. There's just as much tension going on in Alexandria as there is outside of it, which I definitely like seeing. So Carl finds Ina in his house. She wanted to tell Carl goodbye, and she wants to leave. And, you know, she was kind of reluctant to come to Alexandria, so she might not really want to stay there, but Carl insists that she help protect the house and Judith, and she says there are too many people to protect, and Alexandria is too big with too many blind spots, and Carl says whoever got in the walls, they're going to die, all of them. He's making sure that that's going to happen, and I like how, you know, willing Carl is to step up. Honestly, Carl in this episode is really a leader. You're really starting to see Carl go into that leadership role, and I know a lot of people say, oh, Carl's kind of an annoying character, but the way he is now, I love the way they're writing Carl. He's really learned a lot from Rick, and I really feel he's starting to become very much like Rick. He's really stepping into that leadership role, and I really like seeing that. And, uh... Carl and Enid is very similar to how Jesse and Rick were. Not how they are now, but how they were. How Jesse protected, you know, how Rick protected Jesse and things like that. Very much like Carl and Enid. So more Alexandrians are slaughtered, take pris taken prisoner as the invaders mark W's on their head with blood. And of course, we know that W's mean those, those big, terrifying walkers, the W walkers. And Carl runs around the community, tries to save one of the Alexandrians who was stabbed in the stomach be just before she got there. And... Carol puts the woman down, and it's a really crazy scene. I mean, you don't really know what's going to happen with this woman. And uh, Spencer is looking on from the bell tower and attempts to snipe the invaders, but misses. And uh, unfortunately, that didn't work out well for him. So Rosita saves someone, and that was good she did that. And Adele Arno Foods truck drives straight into the Alexandria while it sounds its horn after crashing. And that was what the horn sound was. Of course, we all want to know, 
what the hell was that? It was a food truck. That's what the noise was, and I loved seeing that. I thought that was fantastic that we found out what that noise was. Now, I, was, I didn't know what that was, but I liked that we saw that, and it didn't seem like something that was a huge deal, but it really was, and I liked that they finally said, look, that's what the horn was. I thought it was definitely very well done, and... Uh, you know, it's just an assault of the wolves, and that's really all it was. The wolves, that's the name of the walkers, the wolves. And uh, I thought this was, you know, was going to be a huge deal or something, but no, it's just something that occurred because of the wolves and everything. I thought that was interesting. So Spencer is trapped in the bell tower. Rosita and Aaron carry an injured woman in for help. They will need to go help, and, uh, you, you know, they, that they're needing to go help this woman, because obviously this woman is injured, and they're going to have to help her. So Eugene elects to stay with Denise, because somebody has to, and you can tell that Denise doesn't really know uh, what to do here, and Spencer opens the truck's door, finds a zombie, which Morgan puts down, and we do see Morgan in this episode, which Morgan in this episode is awesome and i really feel that just the few weeks or the few days that he's been with rick which you can tell it's only been a few days he's already stepping back into that position that he was in in the first episode he's already doing that and while he still has a moral compass he is understanding what rick is telling him and i like seeing that um i do still feel there's gonna be some leadership things between morgan and rick though um because morgan asks what happened and spencer tells him that there's a group inside killing people and morgan asks if he'll come help but spencer doesn't answer indicating a negative response and a man with an axe stands off with morgan morgan tells him to leave but the man comes at morgan just as a disguised carol saves him and uses blood to mark a w on her head which i thought was very smart of carol very reminiscent of the premiere in season five when carol disguised herself she's very good with that she's very good with disguising herself and uh you know, knowing how to help out these people. That's something I've always really loved about Carol is the way she does that. She's very smart. And Morgan tells Carol she doesn't have to kill people. And, uh, you know, again, Morgan doesn't really understand, you know, when you have to kill people, when you don't yet. He's still trying to figure that out. And I like that uh, he tells Carol that she doesn't like doing that. And she wants to get to the armory. And again, Carol has changed a lot. And he doesn't really see that. The thing is, he doesn't really know Carol, but from what he's seen of her, it didn't really seem like she wants to be that person. He's never really seen her go through her having to kill people, and he's still trying to figure that out, and I like seeing that. He's starting to get it, but he's still trying to, you know, understand that there are certain people you have to kill, and you can't really save anyone at this point. So Deanna and Maggie find Spencer outside the walls. Deanna wants to stay outside the walls to service the community, so she hides in the truck with Spencer guarding her. And Denise and Tara try to save the injured woman. She's bleeding and needs a surgeon. She's, it's just, it's really bad. And Tara insists that Denise attempts to save her. And uh, Eugene tells Denise not to be a coward. And it seems like things are going to go well. Um, you know, I was hoping that Denise would be able to save her. But as we know, Denise is not actually a doctor. She's a psychologist. So we have no idea if this is going to work. And that was very intense. I really love seeing that. And uh, Ron is scared by the wall and hiding as a man approaches with a huge knife. The man is shot in the leg by Carl. The man begs Carl not to kill him, then tries to grab Carl's gun. And Carl promptly shoots him down, which I was very happy that uh, Carl did. He shoots him down right away. He offers to keep Ron safe and... Uh, Ron refuses. He doesn't want to stay safe. And again, as we can tell from last week, Ron really doesn't want to listen to these people. He very much is against them. And he obviously is really upset, not just with what happened with Pete, but just in general. He doesn't really trust any of them, it seems. And I think that definitely is very interesting. And that's going to be a huge conflict going on here. Because if, if Ron's probably going to die. I'm, he is. I mean, just from these two episodes, Ron's going to die. He's a goner. I'm saying that right now. I mean, he didn't die in this episode. But he's a goner, definitely. Ron is a goner, and I don't see him living um, after this season. I don't see um, it going well for him. So Jesse and Sam hide in the closet as shadows go by and footsteps run past, and Jesse tells Sam to lock the door as she leaves. She steps outside with her gun and yells at Ron to stay outside just before being attacked from behind, and she uses a pair of scissors to take down the female intruder as Ron looks on, and Morgan and Carol charade past other wolves as people are attacked, and that's that scene with Jesse and the scissors, that's just a badass right there. Again, she's had to, you can tell how much she needs to step into that role, and you know, it's not something she had to, she was used to doing, but I love seeing that, and that was awesome, I love that. So Morgan and Carol charade past other wolves as people are attacked. Morgan likes to save the victim as Carol guns down a few wolves. And Gabriel is about to be stabbed as Morgan saves his life. And 
Morgan, to me, seems like the person that might actually help Gabriel. No one really wants to help him, and I think Morgan is going to be that one that actually helps him and be like, you know what, maybe we need to help out this guy and listen to him. And I think that definitely is very interesting if Morgan is the one to do that. And I don't know if that's the direction we're going, but it does seem like Morgan is the only person that actually understands Gabriel, and that's because Morgan and Gabriel are kind of similar in the sense that Morgan doesn't really understand... Um, why kill? And Carol engages with wolves in the armory, shoots them down. One is alive in the armory floor. Carol puts her down, and Carol finds Olivia hiding in the closet before packing all the guns she can into a bag, and she teaches Olivia how to shoot a gun and leaves, and it's very, my only thing with that, I, I got kind of worried because we know what happened with Lizzie. Remember when Carol taught Lizzie how to shoot a gun and then Lizzie went all crazy? I felt like that was going to happen with Olivia, so I don't know if that's going to, I'm just like, Carol, what are you doing? Like, the last time you, ha you had someone, you know, teach someone to shoot a gun, it didn't end so well. So I don't know if it's going to end well for Olivia, but we'll have to see. So Gabriel asks Morgan how he learned to use this stick like he does, and he tells him it was from a cheesemaker. And if you remember, Lenny James, you know, who plays Morgan, said that it would have something to do with cheese, and it is, because he learned it from a cheesemaker, which I thought was pretty funny. Throw some humor in there. And the wolf they captured tells them that they shouldn't be here because of the trap, and Carol shoots him down before reuniting with Maggie, and uh, I thought that was really great that Carol did that. Aaron and Rosita then find intruders in the house. They gun them down as they attempt to escape, and Carol then guns down a wolf, chopping a body in the street, and it's just crazy. Morgan encounters a wolf who said and asks if who uh, says that if he lives there, and he recognizes him. Morgan is surrounded and tells them that their people have guns and his don't, and suggests that they leave. They'll be shot if they ever come back. And one tells Morgan that they didn't choose this life. Scampers off with the rest, picks up a gun, and. Uh, I really do, I think it's interesting what he said, that they didn't choose this life, it's just the path they've gone, you know, these, the wolves are just as bad as the walkers, they're humans, they're not walkers, but they're just as bad because they do exactly what the walkers do, and Morgan closes the gate behind them, and I definitely love seeing that, so Carol finds the first woman dead in the grass with her cigarette, she sits with the pack on her front porch, tries to wipe the blood off of her forehead, and she notices an A marking on the porch, and, uh, she starts to tear up, and A, of course, is for Alexandria, and she's really tearing up because Alexandria is starting to fall apart. It really is. Alexandria is not really that safe anymore, and it's it's really sad, but it's not safe. Um, Aaron looks at the bodies on the ground, puts one down. He rolls it off of, of a bag, finds images of the safe zone inside, and Denise tries to save Holly, and unfortunately, Holly ends up flatlining. I didn't think things were going to go well for Holly, and she's performing CPR, but it's just not working. Eric, Tara, and Eugene are looking on, and what I love about Denise that we've seen her for one episode, we already really care about her because she doesn't know what she's doing. She's trying to do her best, and it's not working, and Tara commands Denise's efforts, but Denise just wants to be alone, and Tara tells Denise to make sure she gets Holly's brain, and Denise just feels so bad about what's going on. She's crushed over what she's doing, and you can just tell how bad this is for Denise. And Maggie, Deanna, Rosie, and Spencer walk the gate. Spencer asks Rosie if that's what happened today. He questions how they've lived, knowing that's the world. And she tells Spencer, for this group and Abraham, she has something to die for. And Maggie puts down the lookout who was burned in the beginning. And, uh... I really like that scene, seeing Rosita and how much she cares about Abraham and everything. And Carl sees a body out the window, looks for Enid, and he finds a note on the ground by the door, which reads, Just survive somehow. So, essentially, we are to believe that Enid has left. Enid has left, and uh, that's not good, because she's probably going to die. I don't think Enid's going to survive, but she's now left Carl... And she obviously wants him to, I guess, be a leader on his own. And I guess she kind of feels like maybe she's in the way, which I can understand. I mean, you can't, you don't have time for romance. And I think she thinks that Carl likes her. And I think before she wants, you know, anything happens, she wants to leave. Plus, she never really wanted to be in Alexandria, so she left. And it's too bad, but the timer rings. Carl takes out food, takes food out of his own. And I don't know if Enid's going to be able to survive on her own. I don't know if we're going to get an update on her at any point, but I don't think this is the last we've seen of Enid. I feel like we're going to hear about her again. I just, Carl and her had a thing, and I feel we're going to see her again. I just, I feel like something's going to happen there. Um, but then the ending of this episode was truly fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Morgan finds a walker in the streets, which he dispatches. He cautiously enters a house and finds the wolf from the season 5 finale. And that was crazy. If you remember, that's how the season 5 post credit scene ended, was we saw that wolf, and we finally see that wolf in this episode, which was 
awesome. I loved seeing that. And the wolf recognized Morgan, and uh, Morgan says that he can't, can you? He should have. And Morgan says he's sorry. Strikes him with the stick, and Morgan, and he, you know, attacks this man. It's just, it's an awesome scene. And again, Morgan just, he's now, he's just come there, and already he's resuming back into this role of having to take out people and do some violent things. And he is starting to understand, he's definitely starting to understand the ways of uh, how to survive in the apocalypse. And Morgan then walks along the damaged and victimized Alexandria streets, finds Carol. The two don't say anything. They walk in different directions, and that's basically how the episode ends. And wow, guys, what an episode this was. Seriously, Alexandria is officially not safe anymore. And I know you guys say, oh, it wasn't safe before, but they never had walker problems. They never had wolf problems. They never had any of that. They had that gate. They don't have that gate now. The gate is gone. And like I said before, if you have a gate, it's going to break. And Alexandria is not safe anymore. And I really feel that when Rick gets back to the group, they're going to try to leave because it's just not safe now. I'm pretty sure Deanna will go with them, but I don't think Alexandria Safe Zone is a safe place anymore. It's just, there's nowhere really that's safe. That's how it is. There is nowhere that is safe. And uh, it really sucks, but that's the truth. It's just gotten worse. Worse. And the wolves, I think, are very interesting because they're just as powerful as the walkers, if not more powerful, because they're humans. They don't, the thing about the wolves is that they don't walk slowly. They can attack you, you know, do whatever they want. They're humans, but they act like walkers. And I thought that was definitely very interesting to see. And I really love that. Definitely, I thought that was very well done. Um, and I thought that was definitely very interesting. So, I definitely like seeing that. Let's talk about Morgan. Morgan definitely has now gone into a leadership role. I really feel that Morgan and Rick are going to have some problems. Because Morgan, I think, is starting to understand what's going on. And he's going to probably try to kind of be a, a, the leader. But Rick essentially is the leader. And I feel that's really where they're going to have, you know, some clashing going on there. And I think it definitely is going to be very interesting. Uh, Carol willing to step up and just help out everyone. When Carol is a badass, it's always awesome. And I love seeing that. But what I also really love seeing are the Alexandrians realizing they have to step up and do some violent things, and I like seeing that. Gabriel, I feel like the only person who really understands Gabriel is Morgan. Morgan, I think, is going to train Gabriel, and Rick is going to have a problem with that. Rick does not trust Gabriel whatsoever, and he definitely is not going to want Morgan training Gabriel. But again, Morgan doesn't know all the shit that Gabriel has done to them, and how he almost screwed them over and made them, and almost had them kicked out of Alexandria for good. So, obviously, it's not going to be Morgan's fault, and obviously it's just it's a sign of bad timing um, for on Morgan's behalf, which I think everything going on Morgan is just bad timing. He showed up at completely the wrong time, and there's nothing he can do about it, but I don't think things are going to end up well for Morgan and Rick. Uh, Ron is a goner. Okay, Ron's a goner. The fact that he doesn't trust Rick, he's a goner. I don't see him living... Um, past this season. I do think he's going to live, uh, you know, this season, but I do think he's not going to live past this season, so I definitely like seeing that. Um, I, I don't like seeing that, obviously, but that's going to be interesting to see. Uh, Jesse stepping up, I really like seeing. I like seeing that Jesse is protecting her son in whatever way she can, and I think that was definitely very well done. Um, that's going to be very interesting to see. I like the character of Denise, I really do, but she really is going to have some problems because she's not a doctor, and Hopefully, someone's going to be able to help her here. I'm not sure who's going to be able to, but hopefully someone can because, it just again, you can't really save people, and it just goes with that theme of you really can't save anyone now, and it really sucks, but she doesn't really remember how to be a doctor and what to do there. Enid, are we going to get an update on Enid? I hope we do because I really liked Enid as a character, and I hope she's not a goner. I really do hope she's not. I understand why she's doing what she does for Carl, but it, I hope we see Enid again because I really like seeing her in this episode, and I think it was definitely very interesting uh, that we saw that from her. I, I hope we see more of her, definitely, because that's going to be interesting uh, to see. So hopefully there's more of that. Uh, Alexandria, it's only going to get worse. I really think we're going to have a major death coming very soon already, I think, in the beginning of the season. And I'm not saying, like episode, like, the mid-season finale. I'm talking about early in the season. I really think we're gonna see a major death happening, um, because it's just not safe anymore, and someone has to die. That's just what it comes down to. Who I think that person can be, Ron or Gabriel. One of them, they're gonna die. Gabriel, I don't see living at all. I mean, Gabriel isn't trained very well. He can't fight off anyone. He's not, uh, very violent, and he's probably gonna die because of it, and you know, him saying, oh, I'm ready to fight, it's just too late, and I don't think it's going to work out well for Gabriel. <clears throat> so, I'll see what happens there, but next week, we are back with Rick and all of them, and I don't know if they're going to regroup. Maybe they're going to take a few episodes. I don't know, 
but I'm fine with that. You know, most times, sometimes I don't like it when they separate these things, but with something like this, there is so much going on on both sides of the story that we have to, that if they do it this way for the whole season, it makes sense because we have to do that. You know, Rick going on his whole thing with the walkers, um, you know, Rick uh, with Daryl and all of them going on that run with the walkers and trying to stay away from them and keep them away from Alexandria is just as interesting as what's going on with the Alexandrians in Alexandria. And that's something I definitely love seeing. I didn't know all this episode was going to be. I didn't know it was, we weren't going to see Rick at all, but I definitely like seeing that. And over, guys, so this was an amazing episode. Also, Carl, I like seeing Carl kind of be like Rick. He's definitely starting to turn into Rick, and you definitely see some similarities between him and Rick, and I like seeing that. But let me know what you guys saw this episode. I thought this was an amazing episode. I didn't think it was as strong as uh, the first episode. I will actually, I, I thought it was just as strong. Do you think it was just as strong as the first episode? It was a different kind of episode. The first episode was definitely more exposition heavy and more like, here's what's to come this season. And this is definitely starting to show the season is going to be crazy. There's a lot that's going to happen, and I can't wait to see what happens in the rest of this season. It's truly going to be something awesome. I can't wait for it. Um, it definitely is going to be very interesting to see what happens there. Um, that definitely, I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen with that. Also, I like to see, I hope we see more of the wolves, because like I said, they're very powerful, and I don't think this is the last we've seen of them, that just because they got them out in this episode, I don't think this is the last we've seen of them at all, and I don't think it's going to end up well for them at all either, so we'll have to see what happens with the wolves, because I definitely feel they might end up being their greatest threat, yeah, probably even more of a threat than the walkers, um, and we'll have to see what happens with that. But that is my review. Hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode. I thought this was an absolutely amazing episode. I really did love it. And I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for tonight's episode of The Leftovers. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.